because we are doing this whole stream and so on. I am, I am a man who actually trained as a medical professional, and uh, I le later branched off into pharmaceutical research. I actually have my master's in uh, specifically cancer immunology, and immunotherapy, to be to be very very specific. And then at some point, I actually realized I'm living a lie, because. I've done something about six years of higher education, and it did not make me happy. Because at the end of the day, I came in for the medical profession to try and save people, and then I can't even do that. So, yeah. That's the truth. By the way, let's, let's actually take the sword out of the stone. So. We actually got fucking Excalibur out of there. Help a man dying from cancer disease. No, 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 it's a fun story. Honestly, I use uh, I use a lot of it to, to sort of uh, get through life as well. To be honest, to be honest, I, I can actually tell you, like, if... If you want us to be like less edgy and less uh, generalized and so on, uh, the fact is, uh, when when you become a corporate man, uh, everything sort of changes in that regard. You're you're told that uh, you can do whatever you like, you can actually make an impact in the world, and then you know when you get into actual companies, we've got a very long pipeline of actually delivering any kind of medication to the public. And um, what I was seeing in that industry was like uh, everything that was novel and new, everything that was very innovative and could actually help people and solve their lives and so on, that was being shafted. That was being shafted because there would be a lot of very dominant corporations at the time that would try and suppress it because, of course, it's market competition. If you've got the big boys like... Uh, Okay, you got fucking what, GlaxoSmithKline, you've got uh, Pfizer, uh, you've got Johnson & Johnson. Um, those might be like some of the big players. They, they will, they, they will uh, kill any of her competition. Also, GlaxoSmithKline is already fucking bought out and shit like that. Um, you know, if, if, if you're not part of these big brands, Good luck. Good luck actually getting a medication to the market. Because I'll tell you, you know, everybody uh, does these little fundraisers and it's very, very cute and all. You know, they raise money for cancer and so on. And they say like something big like, oh great, we raised a million bucks for some random cancer research which is not focused. Do you know how expensive it is to actually get a drug to the market? It, it, it not only takes a decade, it costs about roughly one to 1.2 billion dollars to get a drug to the market, on average. So, good luck being a small company and actually getting all of that shit uh, working and across. Because actually at the end of the day, some of the therapies that are very, very good, they're not expensive. And you know, despite what a lot of people think, you're not actually fucked if you're in, let's say, stage 3, 4 metastasis and so on. You can actually, there are, there are therapies. You can do, um, uh, let's see, uh, what is it actually? Du -du 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 -du. Is, this, is that PD-1 blockers? Yeah, so we, we, we actually have had like a lot of success. We, we do like these kind of ones. We do uh, PD-1 inhibitors and so on. We give you a bunch of stuff that make sure that your immune system has free license to attack the, the cancer cells themselves. And that works very, very well. Not many side effects and so on. Um, in contrast to like chemo and so on. Um. <laughs> uh. Anyway. That is something for another time. Uh, I just want you to know that there are always uh, options if you are actually diagnosed with cancer and if it's not uh, at an early stage. Um, and you should look into immunotherapy. There's a lot of uh, very great guys out there. If you, 
if you have to vow, you you would probably have to travel for that. I think Cork Cork has like a very good medical center that uh this is in Ireland, Dublin. Well, not not in uh, Dublin. Uh, just down in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, my theory to cure cancer. Basically, basically uh all cancers work differently, but if I can tell you like one thing that you can leave with this stream and actually maybe grow uh your knowledge even slightly, uh, think about it this way. Every day that you exist in your life, you g generate transformed cells, and yet you do not develop cancer. You develop cancer usually at a very uh, particular point in your life. And uh, that's actually when your immune system does not detect it anymore. Or it gets a bit lacking. That's why, you know, cancer rates are going up around, uh, you know, 50 and 60. Uh, around 50 and 60 is when your immune system actually go down. And it's actually, I think, um, so actually what happens, I think, what kind of age do you normally get thymic involution? So uh, most, of your, most of your adaptive, uh, let's say, T cells, which are a big bulk of your immune system, are produced in the thymus. The thymus undergoes thymic involution, which is actually the thymus will shrink and you actually lose your capacity to make new uh, adaptive T cells. So... If you would imagine that this process kind of maximizes around 60 years and you don't have that much of a capacity to make new T-cells, that is around the time when cancer really does start uh, occurring. So all I would actually tell you, keep your immune system up and you can actually avoid getting cancer in the first place. And uh, uh, there's, there's quite a lot of ways to do that, but... Um, Okay, here's a here's a little idea. Uh, I'll make a little uh, a little example. Like, let's say you had a petri dish. Uh, in that petri dish, you put some bacteria. Now, you treat that bacteria with antibiotics for about uh, six months. I can guarantee you that the bacteria will adapt to the antibiotics in six months, and they will be resistant to it. Now. That's actually something that can be modeled in a laboratory. If you have a Petri dish with bacteria and you treat it simultaneously with two different agents, two different antibiotics, the possibility of uh, actually developing resistance is an order of an exponential much more difficult to actually occur. You should approach cancer in the same goddamn way because cancer is essentially... What a cancer wants in your body, um, it wants a very static environment. That's, that's one of the key things to take back. Uh, if an environment is always changing, cancer cannot actually exist in a very healthy state. That's why when we see when people go through uh, spontaneous remission or regression of tumor load, uh, what time does this actually uh, happen? It's actually when you get sick. Uh, flu and colds. A flu raises your body temperature rapidly, and it actually sort of exposes the cancer cells to the rest of the immune system. And this is partially why, if you look at animals in nature, and then you can look at the same animals in zoos, suddenly their cancer incidence appears. Uh, elephants in the wild, it's unheard of that they actually get cancer. In zoos, it's a major killer. Now, uh, if you want to prevent it, if you want to prevent uh, cancer, the only two things I can actually recommend for you is, one, do, um, do high-impact exercise. Uh, do exercise that actually builds your muscle. Because as we understand now, it's um, <clears throat> all, all your muscles are actually kind of an immune organ. And because it's an immune organ, it is actually partially responsible for keeping you alive. And we kind of found this very, very interestingly because we had a couple of studies and then, you know, it was very interesting because we could model somebody's cancer survival, like how likely are they to live through um, cancer based on their lean muscle mass. And, and here's another thing. Uh, you can look at this anecdotally because we haven't actually done a study on this, but I thought it was a very interesting thing. Uh, how many bodybuilders do you know that have developed cancer, which is not cancer of the brain, which works a little bit differently. 
It's um, not many. Your muscle mass can directly contribute to preventing the incidence of cancer. So, yeah, go, go, go get fucking ripped. I mean, you don't have to go get fucking ripped, but please have some muscle mass. Because I can actually tell with a patient if they're very skinned, if they're very, very wasting, they will die. I can pretty much say, like, for an assurance. Oh, yeah, I've actually heard about that scorpion-derived uh, peptide and so on. Anyway, I should not keep you guys too busy. I think, um, I, I think uh, keep up your exercise levels. And another thing is, uh, don't be afraid of actually changing your environment. Um, actually getting illnesses, getting sicknesses, they are directly competing with a, with a cancer because you're disrupting its environment. If you keep disrupting your body's environment often enough, you, you don't have the possibility of developing cancer because you need a static, nice environment for it to grow. And, and, and one thing you can actually do, which is kind of easy for most people, um, think about people who, uh, <clears throat> how our ancestors lived back in the past, back when we were just going from Paleolithic humans. We, we would either live next to a river or we would live next to the ocean. Uh, we typically consumed quite a lot of seafood or uh, just fish and so on. And that would have actually been our main source of zinc. Uh, as zinc is necessary for the manufacturing of your uh, immune cells. If you don't have enough of it, you don't produce your maximum capacity. And we actually also found this in cancer studies that uh, a lot of people who develop cancer, their diet is very lacking. So you can, you can, you can substitute uh, zinc very, very easily. I actually get uh, zinc citrate in, in very, very high doses. Wait, let me, let me try and hide my account and so on. Okay, I'm not going to hide this. But hey, you can get shit like this. Uh, if, if, if you're even like sick right at that moment, uh, if, you're, if you're sick immediately at the moment, I actually tested it with a friend very recently. We had like one of our friends as a control subject and the other friend, like the moment that he got sick, I started giving him uh, 100 milligrams of this stuff. So two tablets a day. He managed to get out of his cold in about half a time as, as my friend who was the control subject. So yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good stuff. I, I fully recommend it. Yeah, so that's uh, that's all. That's all. I am not gonna keep you. Uh, yeah, you can take the you can take like the fifty milligrams uh, uh, daily, and uh, you're you're actually absolutely correct uh, for the manufacturing of your sperm and uh, the volume of your stuff. Uh, zinc is the main contributor. <laughs> And actually, your uh, your volume can be doubled. Uh, that's only for the boys. <laughs> uh, and yeah, yeah. Why isn't zinc a sponsor? I literally attack like a lot of problems that people have with goddamn zinc because they're always deficient. <clears throat> uh, and uh, I will I will have to head out for now because uh, this has entirely been a monetary thing to try and uh, get money from DLive. Uh, but we are going to actually spend it for good purposes. Um, because, you know, ever since the God Hand video, I've not really funded uh, Hentai, because a lot of sponsors have just not paid me. Uh, I'm hoping to get DLive as our daddy that can sponsor a lot more Hentai. And then hopefully I can kind of make up for the drought. Anyway, anyway, you boys, uh, please take care. Um, have a good one. Uh, be well to yourselves and, and everyone else. And I, I don't know, just live a good life in accordance to your morals and so on. So take care. Tatra. <laughs>